Let's do this, shall we? Let's get back into it. Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm starting out the year in office chic. How is it going for you? This is not office chic, it's a Primark jumper and a very old, I don't even know where this shirt is from, I've literally had it for years. It's fine. <laughs> Happy New Year, I hope you're starting out well. I... Locked down in it. <laughs> Today I want to talk to you guys about what my language learning journey has taught me about my life as a performer and my performance singing acting craft. Before we get started on that, show of the week. I know I forgot last week but I'm bringing it back for 2021. Show of the week is Funny Girl because I started learning people from Funny Girl today. Quite a difficult song when you do not have, you know, backing track because the chords go all over the place and then the melody goes where you don't expect it to go and you're like oh accidentals where did you come from but it's a really lovely song also a great show saw it when it was in town really enjoyed it so i will link to a cast recording below so you can check it out yeah now if you've been on my channel for a while particularly recently in 2020 especially if you've been watching my bullet journal content from about july time you're probably aware that I have been on a language learning journey throughout 2020 because escapism. I'm not gonna go too much into the background of that, but long story short, I studied it for a year doing my undergrad, then didn't study it because I had no money and no one to practice with. Then 2020, COVID happened, couldn't concentrate on anything, escaped into Spanish because I already knew a bit and it was something completely different to the rest of the stuff I cared about, which was on fire. So yeah, that's basically what happened. And over this, I guess now it's like nine months, I've got kind of good at Spanish. Um, yeah, I'm watching La Casa de Papel, which is great. Watch it. There are English subtitles and an English dub. I've heard that the English dub is terrible, but English subtitles, uh, Money Heist, Netflix. La Casa de Papel, original title. And you like, I can read Spanish, I can understand Spanish. My speaking's gone down a little bit, I think, and listening is hard, because Spanish people just speak so goddamn fast. Fun fact, Spanish is the second fastest language in the world. Did not know that till today, but there we go. Anyway, so a lot of language channels obviously talk about how different tips, tricks, mindsets from other aspects of their lives feed into their language learning and what things help in that aspect. But throughout this year, I've actually found that a lot of the advice, tips, mindsets that language learning YouTubers talk about as being very important and essential to their language learning journeys actually can be applied a lot to performing. So here are the top three language learning tips and tricks that have kind of help me reevaluate and rediscover my approach to performing. Tip number one is having time or action based goals as opposed to goals that are around things that you can't control. Now in language learning that usually means your goal being fluency. The reason that having the goal of to be fluent in X language by X time isn't helpful is because firstly, firstly, <laughs> that's not a word, is because firstly, fluency is a moving target and it's very difficult to define. When it comes to your own personal goals, for someone, fluency might be just being able to have a simple conversation or to be able to go to a country and communicate with local people about what you want or what you need. For other people, fluency would be kind of a C2 level in your second or your target language. And C2 is basically like an educated native speaker. So a native speaker that's got a high grade in high school or been to university or like a higher level of education. For some people, Fluency might be, oh, I just want to be able to read things in the target language. I don't care about speaking and listening. Or I just want to be able to speak and to communicate. I don't care about being literate in my target language. People's definition of what fluency they'd be happy with is different. And the second reason that fluency isn't a good goal is because you don't have control over it. How quickly you become fluent in a target language will depend on how proficient you are at language learning 
if you have learnt languages in the past, you're gonna find learning a new one a lot easier. If you're a noob, you're gonna find it harder. How close the target language is to your own, whether you speak other languages that are similar to that target language, how many hours you have free to study the language or listen to the language. And while some of those things you can have a little bit of control of, you can't have complete control over all of those things. And having goals that you don't have control over just kind of defeats the object. The whole point of goals is that you have a goal and you can take clear steps to get to that goal, right? Yet we do that with our goals as performers all the time. At least I know I do. The amount of times my goals, like career goals as an actor has been to be seen at the national, to be on a West End stage in five years, to have this many auditions, whatever the number may be. I'm not saying that those are necessarily bad and I think they're useful wishes or aspirations. And I like distinguishing between goals and aspirations because aspirations are something that you can use to kind of be like, this is where I would want to get to in an ideal world. And I do think that is useful. It's useful to know what you want out of life, what you're reaching for. But in terms of like a goal of by this time, this is going to have happened. There are some things I can control if we use the, you know, being cast in a national play in an alternate universe. <laughs> Let's say I had a goal of to be cast in a national play in 2021. I have some control over that. I can write to the casting director. I can tell my agent, this is what I want to happen. Can you do your best to make this happen? But at the end of the day, I don't decide if I get an audition. Someone else does. And then if I do get an audition, I don't decide if I get cast. Someone else does. It takes a lot of power away from me. Whereas having a goal of, I will write to this many people, or having a goal of I will learn this many monologues and this many songs. If I do it, then it's done. Goals like that are so much more helpful in terms of keeping up our motivation and actually being able to look back at what we've done and being like, yeah, I did that. If your goal is to be in a national play this year and that doesn't happen and you don't even get seen, you end up feeling like a failure and then that's just demotivating. That's the first thing that language learning has taught me about being a performer is to set time or action-based goals rather than goals that you don't have control over. The second thing that language learning taught me about performing is the importance of habits. This kind of leads on from the previous point about goals as well. And also this wasn't necessarily a new thing. Neither was the first one actually. It just kind of hammered it home. A lot of people go into learning a language and I definitely think I was guilty of this to some extent, thinking that, you know, one day I'll hit fluency and that'll be that. Or I'll reach whatever level I'm happy with reaching and that'll be that and it's like boom done when in reality language learning is part of your life like i will always be learning slash speaking spanish and because of that i think when you are actively learning and engaging in the language habits are important because they're the things that carry you through when you get demotivated now in language learning, demotivation is basically laziness. <laughs> At least for me, it's like when I'm tired and I just want to chill out and it's like, I would rather watch a YouTube video in English than a YouTube video in Spanish. Because let's face it, watching things in not your native language or engaging in media that isn't in your native language is harder, it's tiring, you have to think more. So when you're feeling lazy, you just don't wanna. <laughs> Making a habit prevents that demotivation from kind of taking root because it's like, this is what I do at this time or this is what I do after I've done this particular other thing that I do every day, right? Obviously with performing, there's a lot of emphasis on practice, like especially if you're a musician, you will know. <laughs> practice, that was a habit I did not build when I was a child. I was terrible at practicing and it kind of sucks that I was able to get away with it when I was a kid because now I find making myself practice when I don't have the motivation takes work, but that's adulting. But it's true, there are so many different things to demotivate you when you are a performer, whether you're an amateur performer or whether you're a professional performer, there's the, you know, rejection, the comparison with other people, worrying you're not good enough, all of those like saboteurs and things. 
that can get in your way. And then on top of that, if you're a professional, there can be lots of life things that get in the way. You know, when you've got lots of auditions constantly coming up and you get burnt out, if you've gone ages without an audition or you've gone ages without a job, all of those things can weigh down in you and demotivate you as well. And I think that's where building habits, like positive habits of practice, and not even just practice, but engaging with the art form, reading plays, reading monologues, seeing what you can. Obviously, we're in another lockdown, so it'll be stuff online or more film and TV rather than live theater. But, you know, actively engaging in your art form and even like things that are slightly outside your art form as well but i think making those habits so that even when you are feeling demotivated because you haven't had an audition or we're in the middle of a global pandemic and our entire industry is still shut down you're still keeping consistent and i think also because like with language learning your improvement as a performer is something that's very difficult to see with language learning there's various plateaus that are talked about in the language learning community and the big one is the intermediate plateau. So that's going from intermediate to advanced. And the reason that happens is because when you're a beginner, you're learning all of these new words and you're like, oh my gosh, all of this stuff. And you're learning really, really rapidly. The jump from not knowing a word to being able to introduce yourself, describe yourself, ask where something is, is huge. Going from being able to have a fairly basic conversation to being able to have the same conversation but be a little bit more in depth, the improvement isn't as steep. And I think it's the same with any kind of artistic craft. And so when you're not seeing improvement, that's when trusting in the habit that you've built is really powerful. Because if you show up and do the work, further down the line you can look back and be like, how far I've actually come. And that's because every day or every week I was doing this, this many minutes, this many hours, I was building up that habit and now I'm reaping the rewards of it. Does that make sense? So that's the second thing that language learning taught me is the importance of habits. And the third thing that language learning taught me is the power of identity and self-identification. One of the channels that I have really enjoyed in learning about how to learn languages is a guy called Lamont on a channel called Days of French and Swedish. He's just this Australian guy who's learning mostly Swedish. He went through a phase of learning French slash might go back to French. But in one of his videos, if I can find the exact one, I will link it below. He talks about how helpful it is to call yourself a speaker of your target language, even if you are a complete beginner. I can't remember exactly what he said, but like the reason I took, <laughs> the reason I took for this is that it then encourages you to seek out more challenging content and to seek out content that isn't specifically made just for learners or content that you find easy if you're getting to the point where you know, learner content isn't quite challenging enough for you. I definitely noticed that when I started thinking of myself as a speaker of Spanish, I was more ready to look outside of language learning content for input in Spanish. You're more likely and feel more empowered to go out of your comfort zone and seek out content media immersion that you are actually interested in whether or not it's made for learners or not which is just a more fun experience it's a more playful experience it's a more inquisitive experience and it's richer and more fulfilling and i think that is so true with performance you know there are so many little tiny ways where we can kind of put a barrier that content that style of music that type of work is not accessible to me yet because I haven't passed this invisible demarcation where I've gone from being whatever level I am now to the level where I'm allowed to access that like I haven't unlocked the final boss kind of thing and I just think that could be so debilitating to creativity and to exploration which as artists that's what we're all about right <laughs> yes obviously with theatre is also about storytelling and things like that but it's about exploration and discovery whether that's exploration to create something from scratch if you're a composer or a writer or a painter 
or if that's discovery through interpretation, an actor or a musician or a dancer. When we stop doing that and kind of putting limits on ourselves, and we're just like, I'm here, I'm a performer in everything that encompasses. I think that's so much more fun and you give yourself permission to just do the thing. <laughs> it doesn't have to be public, you don't have to post it anywhere, but just have fun with it. You surprise yourself when you go out of your comfort zone and, you know, try new things. And then that on top of making a habit of, you know, turning up every day and, you know, doing the work and trusting in the work and making your goals, you know, about showing up rather than this kind of unattainable, uncontrollable thing. Yeah, it's just, it's just it, isn't it? It's one of the things I'm so grateful about having gone on this language journey for, not just, you know, being able to get better at this language to the point where I can understand things and I can engage in things and that's really exciting. But on top of that, doing something different just makes you see things in a whole new way and I really think that my language journey has done that for me. So that's tip number three is seeing yourself as a doer of the thing to empower yourself to do the thing rather than being whatever the level beneath the level you'd need to be to do all the things is. So those are the top three things that language learning has taught me about being a performer. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. We'd love to have you on the channel. You will probably be seeing more Office Chic because um, you just will. Stay tuned for, I don't know why I said that. Stay tuned for more theater content from a UK perspective and I will see you all in my next video. Bye friends.